nestled between the county boroughs of Merthyr Tydfil and Caerphilly, lies one of Wales' best kept secrets. Gellygear Common, 3,000 hectares of biodiversity rich upland landscape, described as the green lung of the valleys. The area is popular with walkers that enjoy the history and wildlife the common has to offer. But while all that remains of the area's historical past are the remains of ancient buildings and old Roman roads, evidence suggests that ponies have been grazing the land since the arrival of the Romans. While large numbers of the ponies found on the common today once came from loving homes and have been cruelly abandoned on the common by their owners, many come from generations of feral ponies. There are now around 500 individuals grazing the lands and populations are said to hit tipping point. Calls have been made for the numbers to be managed to make way for livestock. But it has been argued that the ponies have been there for so long that they now play a part in the ecology of the area. With their grazing behaviour said to be beneficial for all manners of invertebrates, birds and all other wildlife. So do the ponies of Gatling Gear really benefit this amazing landscape? So how do the grazing habits of these ponies help shape the landscape? Conservation biologists have classified horses and ponies as a keystone species, as they play an important role in habitat maintenance and management. The structural diversity they create helps maintain habitats for a diverse range of species. Equines are selective grazers, creating vegetation mosaics with shortly grazed patches intercept with areas of undisturbed vegetation and it can be useful for slowing down scrub enroachment through browsing. The mosaic communities created through the ponies browsing creates the perfect habitat for many invertebrates and pollinators, which of course will benefit other plant and bird species. Ponies have teeth which point slightly forward, which means that they can graze very close to the ground. This is desirable on sites where a shorter turf is required. For example, Mountain or coastal breeding habitat for chuff requires short turf for feeding sites. However, they are selective grazers, which means they will leave many areas untouched. So let's compare to the grazing habits of sheep. Cute and fluffy? Yes. But what effect are they having on the landscape? Lamb production is the backbone of Welsh agriculture and makes a significant economic contribution across the UK. But lamb production is associated with several environmental impacts including greenhouse gas emissions, soil and water quality. Although sheep grazing areas have seen an increase in wild herbs and sedges, areas that have seen intensive sheep grazing over the decades have been compared to wet deserts that hold very little ecological value. Upland grasslands have been in decline in recent years, with changes in grass composition and a decrease in bird populations due to increased livestock grazing. It has been argued that the reason for these changes may be due to excessive sheep grazing affecting the diversity of arthropods, a key prey species for many birds. Studies also show that sheep grazing has declined the species present of a number of vascular plants, grasses, mosses and liverwort. Ponies, on the other hand, have been used in conservation projects all over the world. In Wales, the native ponies, the Carnethi ponies and the Gower Hill ponies have done a remarkable job of conserving their native landscape. The Caranethi ponies in Snowdonia have helped maintain the rare Welsh habitat of Montane Heath. While the Gower Hill ponies have been busy managing the dominant bracken at the rare dune habitat of Penmine Burrows. So what effect are the ponies and horses of Gellygear Common having on this amazing landscape? So to test the hypothesis that the ponies of Getty Gear are actually ecologically beneficial to this landscape, I'm going to conduct two site surveys using this quadrat. The first site survey will be conducted here at the area grazed by the ponies, and I'll be comparing the results with this sheep grazed area. So I'm going to take my quadrat, throw it behind, and then see what we can find. Ah. 
As anticipated, there seems to be very little here other than short, unidentifiable grasses. There's no signs of any emerging plants, and I can't seem to find any other invertebrates. There are a few isolated buttercups around, but the quadrat seems to be 100% of grass cover. So let's go see what we can find at the pony grazing area. And straight away there was a remarkable difference. First impressions may seem like there isn't really much going on. But look a little closer and a whole new microhabitat can be found. A blanket of moss is covered by various grasses of different lengths, with emerging plant species fighting their way through the grass cover, all benefiting the ecosystem in their own unique way. So let's take a look at the results. Site 1, the sheep grazing area, showed 100% covering grasses. Site 2 is a completely different story, with three different grasses found. Soft rush, creeping bent, and fieldwood rush. There was 11% coverage from hair cap moss, and 6% coverage from white clover and sphagnum moss. But there were also some smaller samples of other emerging plants coming through. Marsh thistle, foxglove, bulbous buttercup, and some young bracken. So what do these results mean? A simplified way of looking at things is to see the food chains that these organisms will create. Take the field woodrush for example. This primary producer will be a food source for this woodrush case bearer moth that likes to feed on the seeds of the woodrush when in larval stage. The moth then becomes food for one of the common threatened summer visitors, the swift. White clover provides food to many herbivores, such as the rabbit, introduced here in the UK by the Normans in the 12th century, which then provides food for the predators of the common, such as the red fox. And the foxgloves are favoured by the larval stages of many butterflies and moths, which then provide food for the bats, such as the pipistrel. But there are many other benefits to having such a diverse ecosystem. Moss, for example, is able to emit oxygen that improves air quality, soaking up carbon dioxide through sequestration. While the grazing allows for vegetation to grow at different heights, creating a range of wildlife habitats and allowing for wildflowers to blossom. So initial investigations show that the grazing habits of the ponies and horses of Gethlige are benefiting their local ecosystem. But this was just one small survey of one of the many areas grazed by the ponies in this huge 3,000 hectare site. And of course there are areas that the ponies happily share and graze with the sheep. So more investigations would need to be done to assess the true ecological value of these ponies. But just through walking through some of the grazing areas, surveys aren't always necessary. Just walking through and taking in some visual observations, you can see the diversity of the vegetation and the different species they can support. Emerging plants and grasses that will develop into habitats for a variety of wildlife. And untouched vegetation, such as the gorse that's a favorite lookout spot for many birds, whilst also provides food and nest sites for ground nesting birds, like the skylark, and the European stone chat. As springtime arrives, new flora can be seen emerging from the ground. Young plants and flowers that will not only be a vital food source for our pollinators, but will create an amazing microhabitat for invertebrates, which will of course then benefit many bird species, such one as the many summer visitors like the wheat ear. So while they're not meant to be here, it's good to see that the ponies are not only surviving, but they are thriving in this often harsh landscape, whilst also providing a service to the environment. Every year a new generation of pony arrives to tackle life on Gethlige Common as a conservation grazer. And I think it's quite safe to say that they look rather content in doing so.
And despite the benefits of having these animals on the common, it should go without saying that Getty Gear is not a free-for-all dumping ground for unwanted animals. The ponies didn't ask to be here, but it just so happens that they've turned out to be Getty Gear's very own ecosystem warriors. <laughs>